Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, my name is Courtney and I run the blog World in Four Days. And I will go ahead and I will link it down below so that you can hop on over to my blog and you can read all the awesome stuff that I talk about. Um, so today is kind of a, um, I don't want to say special post, but I wanted to talk to you guys about something that is important to me. And one of them is human trafficking. Um, it is something that is very, very important to me. Um, I feel like everybody should be safe. I feel that like everybody should be uh, educated about it. And seeing as though I do a whole lot of traveling with myself and my daughter, um, it is definitely a cause that is very near and dear to my heart. And seeing as though it is um, National Human Trafficking um, awareness day um, I wanted to do this um, video so that I could tell you guys about a blog post that I have posted up on my blog as well as I figure this is probably the time to talk to you guys about my Paris experience and why I will probably never go back <laughs> um, and 100% transparency because that is what I am all about. So um, if you want more information on human trafficking, um, there are some amazing apps out there for you guys that travel, um, or even if you don't travel, if you're just doing staycations, um, there's some really cool apps out there that help you um, help those that are um, fighting human trafficking. There's like a really cool one where you can take photos of your hotel um, and you can submit them. And then those people, those organizations that work to end human trafficking can use your photos and match them against other photos um, of people who have been trafficked how, who have been trafficked and they can find out what hotel they're staying at. Um, all that information is in a blog post that I have written. I will link it down below. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to talk to you guys about my Paris experience. I really debated having this conversation because Paris is very dear to near and dear to a lot of people. I will admit I was one of those people that was hardcore Paris. I could not wait to go to Paris. Reese was like dying to go to Paris. It was like top of her bucket list. And we went last summer and I will probably never go back again. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. So one of the main reasons, the thing that I didn't like about Paris was um, Parisians are very, very proud of their culture and their language, which I get. Um, Paris was actually the very first um, international destination where I've traveled to where I had a big issue with the language barrier. Um, I was not expecting that at all with Paris. I was expecting, you know, a lot of people to speak English, you know, things like that, which I understand as a traveler, it is my responsibility to make sure that I speak the language of the country that I'm going to, which trust me, I did. Paris is a very, or French is a very hard language to learn. I did my best. I used every app known to man. You know, I made an attempt to communicate with people in French just didn't go well. Um, but it was it was a very hard experience. Like I did not expect it to be that difficult. So FYI, if you are going to Paris, just know that you're gonna run into a lot of people. See, that's the thing. I wanna say you're gonna run into a lot of people that don't speak um, English, but that's not the case. The thing is, they do speak English. Um, they just don't want to, um, which I mean, technically they don't have to. It's their country, they don't speak English or they're not required to speak English. Um, but just know that if you are going to Paris, it is definitely something that you are going to run into. And it, it for me, it's probably a trip that I should have taken on my own first before I took Reese. So if you are traveling to Paris for the first time and you are bringing your kids with you, that is something that you want to keep in mind. It makes the trip that much more stressful because you are dealing with the language barrier. Um, so keep that in mind if you plan on heading to Paris anytime soon. The other issue that I had with Paris is the cigarette smoke. People smoke everywhere in Paris. And that is not something that I am used to being in the United States and especially being in California. California has very strict no smoking laws. And it's not like that in Paris. I know there was a couple times me and Reese were sitting in a restaurant eating and literally like the people on both sides of us were like just puffing away. And it got so bad, like we actually had to get up and leave because it was, we were just overwhelmed like engulfed in smoke and that was something that I was not prepared for um, whether you're sitting inside whether you're sitting outside in a cafe or something just cigarette smoke everywhere so if you are sensitive to cigarette smoke if you have asthma if you just don't like the way it smells keep that in mind um, when you're visiting Paris um, because that that was a huge issue for me 
The third issue that I had with Paris was just, um, I'm always the type of person that is very aware of my surroundings when I travel and even when I don't travel. But I just felt so overwhelmed in Paris. You have the issues with pickpocketing in Paris. That is big. And I mean, these people are good. And I mean, I thought like, oh yeah, you know, nobody would ever get me. And nobody ever did get me. But it just seemed like at every turn, like I was seeing somebody whose purse was getting stolen or wallet was getting picked. And I was just like, my gosh, like it was crazy. And it just got to the point where it was just stressful. Like every time we went out, we, I don't know, there was one incident when we were walking back to our Airbnb. We stayed in an Airbnb in, in Paris and we were walking back to our Airbnb and all of a sudden we hear like all this commotion and these people running and I look around and this guy is like hauling ass out of this store and there's like a crowd of like 20 people running behind him because he had pickpocketed and stole somebody's, this lady's um, purse while, or her wallet out of her purse while she was shopping in a store and they like literally caught him and like beat the crap out of him in the middle of the street and I'm standing there with Reese and she's like what is going on and I was just like oh my god you know so that set a level of fear in her that she's never had you know with traveling so that was like an issue then we went to um the Eiffel Tower which is like notorious for pickpocketers and like just all kind of scams so be careful when you're around there we didn't have any issues but we did run into somebody else who just happened to be from California. We started talking and she was telling me the story about how she's standing there talking to this lady like right in front of her and she just happened to look down and literally the lady's hand is in her purse and had snatched her wallet out and had taken off running and this girl like ran after her. I mean, me personally, I think that was really stupid. Um, I would never run after somebody because it's just dangerous, but she did because her passport was in there. So that was one thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way about Paris. When I travel, I like to, I mean, you're always gonna need to look over your shoulder and things like that, but I just felt like it, that feeling was just heightened in Paris. And had I been by myself, it might not have been that big a deal, but when you're traveling solo with a kid, that's kind of an issue that you got to think about, which leads me to my fourth incident that happened in Paris, which was the scariest incident. Um, we went to a very famous um, macaroon place in Paris to have macaroons because Reese, you know, being the baker, she wanted to go try it out. So we went, so we're sitting there in this restaurant and this lady sits down next to us, French lady, and um, she gets up and she comes over and she's like, hey, you know, can I take a picture with your daughter? And I wasn't initially caught off guard because traveling um first of all traveling africa as african-american in a lot of places you have people that aren't used to seeing black people i mean let's be real they're not they're not used to and they're definitely not used to seeing mixed race kids and so we've experienced that a lot especially with like asian tourists where they're just like oh you know we want to take a picture we've never seen anybody like you and they want to touch your hair and they want to touch your skin and stuff like that so i wasn't initially put off by it but i wasn't in the mood and i mean i'd, I'd never say yes anyway but i was just like you know what no and so she sat down, but when she sat down, she pulls out her phone and I could see her because she wasn't smart enough to take the flash off. And she's literally taking pictures of Reese while I'm sitting there. And I'm like, are you serious? So we got the check and we go outside to leave. But before we get ready to go outside, this guy walks in and walks over to the lady and they're sitting there talking and there's a, there's a window behind us with a reflection. So I could see the reflection and they're looking at her, the lady's cell phone, and they're scrolling through the pictures and I'm like, holy shit, those are all pictures of my kid. Like literally the lady had taken like rolls like of pictures of my kid and I'm like, what the heck? So at that point it made me a little nervous. So I got up, we walked outside and we were waiting for our Uber. So we're standing outside waiting for our Uber and then the guy comes out and he's, we're standing kind of here. He's standing like maybe I would say 30 feet, 30, 40 feet from us. And I'm looking at him out the corner of my eye and he has his hand like down low and he's motioning to Reese, like, come here, come here. And I'm like, are you serious? So I'm holding Reese's hand and I'm like, I'm, I whisper in her ear like, hey honey, you know, this is what's going on. Whatever you do, don't let go of my hand. If we happen to get set, separated, whatever you do, don't, don't go with these people. And um, I'm looking at him and I can tell that he's, he's kind of faking that he's on the phone and I know he's not really on the phone because when you have an iPhone and you're on it, and you move the phone away, the screen lights up. There was no lighting up on his screen. So I know that he was faking the funk. Like he was not having a conversation, you know, whatever. I'm, I was very aware of what was going on. So then finally, I, I again look over and I could see him and he's like motioning to her, come here. And he's inching, inching closer over to us. So finally, I like grab Reese and I put her on the other side of me and I'm like, mama bear comes out. 
And this guy, he like, now he starts approaching us and he's approaching us. And at that point, like I just panicked. And I know like I've always been told like, if somebody approaches you and you're in a weird situation, pull out your cell phone and just start taking pictures. And I did, I whipped out my cell phone and I, I just started taking pictures of him. And I just started ye not yelling, but I just said, no, get back. And I just started taking pictures. And then he just like kind of walked away and then he walked away around the corner and I could see him like peeking like around the corner, like still looking at us. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So I got back home and I actually, or back to our Airbnb. And then um, we ended up reporting it um, because my entire family was like freaked out. They're like, oh my God, my baby's gonna get kidnapped in, you know, Paris, whatever. And so I called the, the Parisian authorities and I told them, and that was when they told me that that is very, very common in Paris um, and internationally, period. And what they do is they try to take pictures of your child or with your child so that they can try to prove that the child is theirs, either theirs or family member or something, so that if they traffic you, they can get you across the border without a passport. That freaked me out beyond belief. And that was my experience with Paris that led me to feel like I would never go back again with a child. So um, could that have happened anywhere? Yes, I mean, hell, it could have happened in LA. Um, but it just, like the fear that set into me of being in another country and having something like that happen to you was just a little bit more than I could bear. And I mean, it sucks that it happened in Paris because I mean, Paris is supposed to be, you know, the city of love, you know, everybody loves Paris, but it just wasn't the case um, for me. And so I just, again, with my being transparent with you guys and being 100% about my travel experiences, I just wanted to share that information with you and pretty much my reasoning for why I will never go to Paris again. Um, but yeah, so that was just, so the moral of the story is not to scare you or not to discourage you from going to Paris. It's just to be aware, like you should always be of your surroundings when you're traveling, but just be aware of things like that, especially when it comes to issues of human trafficking because it is serious and in the United States, we really let our guard down. We take our, you know, we take that for granted and we kind of don't even think about it until we travel overseas, but it's not an international problem. It's a US problem too. Um, so it just really opened our eyes about, you know, making sure that when I travel that I have Reese with me at all time, that when we are traveling, we're not Snapchatting live so that people know where we are, you know, to make sure she doesn't walk away from me, to not hold really long conversations with people um, and let them know that, hey, I'm a visitor, definitely don't tell anybody that you're traveling by yourself or that, um, or where you're staying, um, because those are all things that, you know, can make you a target. So. Like I said, the moral of the story, just be careful with when you travel to Paris, when you travel to LA, when you travel anywhere. Um, just be really, really aware of your surroundings and um, pay attention to your instincts. If something tells you that something's not right, if you get a weird feeling from somebody, you know, don't be afraid to get up and leave or, you know, to ask for help or something um, because chances are if you're feeling uncomfortable, there's a reason why you're feeling uncomfortable. So that's it. That is my experience about Paris. Um, also make sure to head over to my blog. I will leave the link down below to check out my blog post on human trafficking and how you can help and do your part to end human trafficking. Thanks for watching. If you are new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure to follow me on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as Snapchat. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.